Okay. Yes. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to uh, UN Vector Tile uh, Toolkit uh, Workshop. So uh, my name is Taichi. I'm a uh, professor of, of the Aoyama Gakuin University. And uh, today we want to share about uh, UN Vector Tile Toolkit uh, technical information for many OpenSmap community and HOT, uh, humanitarian OpenSmap team, and uh, Asian Mapras team, and uh, other countries uh, member will join. So anyway, so today uh, we want to share about our knowledge and experience. So, okay. Uh, first, I want to introduce about today's uh, schedule and uh, our uh, abstracts of this workshop. Okay. So, uh, today's workshop, so we are holding with a hot and open map hub Asia Pacific team. And uh, as a country's open map members and uh, use mappers. And uh, also uh, today's this video. So uh, we are uh, recording now. And uh, after this event, uh, we will publish this uh, video on YouTube and we will provide to the uh, hot open map hub uh, Asia Pacific team. So maybe uh, many people will uh, watch this video. And uh, so today's uh, abstract and uh, some details information. Uh, uh, so I published uh, the information on uh, GitHub uh, issue, and uh, maybe some member, some people, at some attendees can uh, open and. Uh, uh, maybe they, uh, he, uh, everyone can uh, write and share about uh, some information on uh, this uh, GitHub issues. And also uh, many times uh, our uh, UNBT community uh, sharing knowledge and uh, information on uh, GitHub uh, UNBT organization. So please join and please discuss and please make more new uh, uh, features or uh, good output. Anyway, uh, today's uh, our workshop's abstract is uh, uh, UNBT, the United Nations Vector Time Toolkit Correction of Open Source Software. So many times we say, said FOSS4G, FOSS4G, and uh, so that is a, a kind of open source software. And that is to, so uh, OS, OSS to produce and uh, host and style and optimize vector tile for web mapping. So UN vector tile toolkit, UNVT can bring OSM data set and other GS data uh, as raster vector tiles. So this workshop will exchange our UNBT experiences as and know-how. So, and maybe my student will explain about the details. So uh, this session, so I have to share about very rough so, uh, structure. So uh, UNBT, uh, UN vector tile toolkit is, uh, has a structure. So that is a, a kind of uh, suite. So uh, the component. So each component uh, divided some uh, functions, and uh, so this is a, a latest, I think, latest UNBT structure. So uh, and import, produce, tie, host, and storytelling, and also optimizing process. So uh, many times, so UNBT community. Uh, attached uh, some tools. So example, if you want to import uh, GIS data set from the online or some, some database, so you can use uh, FOSS4G tools. And if you want to make a vector tile 
data set. So you can use typical and if you want to define add the styling information, you can use map technique or calites. And if you want to host, so you GitHub pages or UNVT portal can um, support. So anyway, so UNVT structure is very uh, useful, but uh, many times, sometimes, so that information is a lot. Of. So uh, today, uh, uh, our student will explain. And also, if you want to get more information, so UNVT uh, GitHub dashboard site, uh, you can access. So uh, please uh, join. And uh, today's our workshop's goals. So we defined three goals. So first, uh, uh, participants will understand uh, about UNVT. This is uh, first uh, our goal. And second, participants will be able to imagine how UNVT can be used. So, and third, in particular, uh, participants will learn that UNVT portable is a pra practical and useful tool, even in developing countries where the power supply is uh, unstable. So, and uh, so thank you for uh, joining this session. And uh, okay, uh, Mr. Kang, I have to read me. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, maybe closing session. So, uh, maybe uh, Nirab or Miko or uh, we will discuss and we will say, uh, talk some information. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Okay. Mr. Ken, can you talk? Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, yes, okay. yes, yes. Thank you. Sorry about that. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here. So I'm not leaving yet. So, but uh, I will not be able to stay at the end of the workshop. I was trying to say that. Sorry about that. So uh, sorry about the interruption. I'm still here. Uh, thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay let's talk. Sure. So yes, uh, Mr. Kang uh, joined as the uh, Open Map Hub uh, Asia Pacific team. And also uh, today's uh, our navigator is uh, my student. Uh, they're uh, collaborating with the uh, Map as network. And also uh, this workshop collaborated to the uh, UNBT community. So uh, thank you for joining. And uh, so, and uh, uh, last information. So uh, uh, today's workshop, uh, mainly we will, share about uh, UNVT portable. So that is a kind of uh, very compact and very low price uh, computer uh, set uh, based on Raspberry Pi. And uh, also uh, UNVT portable can host uh, vector tiles and raster tile data set for the local uh, area. So anyway, a technical session. So uh, our student will explain and uh, so um, maybe uh, we hope uh, uh, we, we hope to hold more workshop like this one in the future. So and uh, maybe in next uh, chance, so we will uh, uh, how to provide or how to get more good uh, Raspberry Pi devices for uh, many countries OSM mappers. So I hope. So anyway. Today we will share, but next step, so we, we want to uh, share uh, or provide uh, this uh, device. And uh, so Raspberry Pi is a very useful tool. And uh, yeah, uh, we want to uh, use and we want to work with those very special tools. And uh, so today, if you have question, please use Zoom uh, webinars uh, Q&A function, or if you have question or comment, 
you can use this hashtag, UNBT hashtag,、uh, for the Twitter or Facebook or other、uh, Instagram.、Uh, anyway, so please、uh, enjoy and please、uh, talk、uh, for more、uh, good uh, UNBT uh, technology and community. We can talk. So, uh, today's uh, our workshop time schedule. So, totally we are thinking about two hours. And first,、uh, uh, now I'm talking about opening. And next step, so, oh, oh sorry,、uh, my student will introduce、uh, about UNBT、uh, from the,、uh, Ibuki and Shiori and Urada. And uh, second, uh, sorry, third, The、uh, technical session、uh, will start uh, from the, uh, after 30 minutes or yes. And next,、uh, sharing use cases for each country、uh, by my student. And、uh, next, so QA time.、Uh, and the last session is a closing. And maybe、uh, some hot team member、uh, will, will talk about、uh, the. Comment. Anyway, this is、uh, today's uh, total uh, our time schedule. So let's start introduction session. So,、uh, who is、okay. speaker? Yes. Ibuki? Yes. Yes.、Uh, let me share the slide. Okay, please. Yes. Okay.、Uh, thank you for joining us today.、Uh, my name is Ibuki Shibayama. Today, we members of the Full Hash Laboratory at Aoyama Gakuen University will talk about UNVT and its use cases. We will, proceed this,、uh, we will proceed with the program like this and have a QA Q session at the end. But first, what is UNVT? The name UNVT is an abbreviation for the United Nations Vector Tile Toolkit. In other words, UNVT is a vector tile toolkit adopted by the United Nations. So, what does toolkit mean in this case? As some of you may know, a toolkit does not mean a set of tools like a screwdriver or hammer. The term toolkit is Often used in the sense of a set of guidelines that compile a set of methods for purposes by organizations such as the United Nations and nonprofit organizations. In other words, UNVT does not have a physical form, it is a methodological pathway developed by the United Nations. To spread the use of vector type around the world. This guideline includes four steps. First, produce vector types. Second, styling it into a form of a map. Third, hosting the map so that it can be viewed in a browser. And fourth, optimizing it to make it better. A cycle of these steps will ensure that the vector tile is continuously utilized and improved. Let's look at each of these steps. In producing data such as maps and aerial images, Uh, converted to vector tile format. This process uses tools such as、G、QGIS and Mapbox Typica NU. 
Now, I think I should explain vector tiles. It is a tile format with excellent machine readability and also can store map information in text format. This reduces the operational cost of map information and make it, it possible to create maps for various purposes. Next, styling. In this step, the vector tile data is edited to create the shape of the map. For example, you can adjust, adjust the thickness and color of the lines of rows. And you can edit the data using Mapbox Studio or directory in the program code. After editing, it can be made into a link or JSON format. Next, post them and make the maps available on the internet. For example, you can host them using GitHub pages. Now I will introduce hosting with Raspberry Pi. By turning the Raspberry Pi into a server and putting vector tile data in it, you can view maps in an offline environment. It can be used with a PC or smartphone terminal, wired or wireless connection. Finally, optimizing. Vector tile allows you to find style the map information. So you can optimize it by making various adjustments. By repeating optimization, you can make the map information more suitable for your purposes. So far, we have given an overview of UNVT. From here, Urara and Shiori will explain a little more detail how it is actually used. Thank you, Ibuki. Um, since it is a big deal, I'll explain how to make it an access point for Raspberry Pi so that it can be used offline. Um, from here, Urara and Shiori give a technical explanation about UNVT portable. Please, uh, <laughs> please give me a next slide. And UNBT Portable uses the main unit as a server and does not require connection via the internet. Thanks to this technology, maps can be used even when electricity is not available in the event of the disaster. Um, as shown in a figure, the map provided by UNBT is created by combining open data, such as OpenStreetMap and aerial images. Um, this time, I will explain using the disaster map of Tako Tamagawa in Japan as an example. Please give me next slide. slide. Ah, please give me a next slide. Thank you. <laughs> um, there are three main tasks to do when providing maps with UNVT portable. The uh, next slide. Next slide. <laughs> Thank you. The first is to make UNVT portable an access point. Is if electricity becomes un unbearable during the disaster it will be difficult to receive information over the internet. However, in the event of disaster, you need to see the maps on your personal computer on a smartphone, therefore by using the main unit as an access point. We have made it possible to connect directly to the main unit from device such as a smartphone. Uh, I used a patch to make the main unit an access point. 
You can use it as a server by installing all of the match force tools described here. Please give me a next slide. Thank you. The second is the production of data. UNBT uses tile maps. Tile data includes vector tiles and raster tiles. Next theory. <laughs> okay. First, I will talk about vector tiles. UNBT makes heavy use of open source. OpenStreetMap is especially important. We also handle data published by the government. In the case of the Futako Tamagawa disaster map, we mainly use these three pieces of data. They are load and building information extracted from OpenStreetMap and information on evacuation world refugees in Setagaya published by Tokyo Metropolitan Government. This is information is often provided in GeoJSON format, but UNBT does not use it as is. Next slide. Uh, here is a production proce process that was explained earlier. Use typical on to rewrite the GeoJSON file into a format such as map box vector tiles. This form is a set of PBF files. Google, the developer of the PBF format, explains it as follows. Protocol buffer are uh, Google's language neutral, platform natural, extensive mechanism for serializing structured data. Think XML, but smaller, faster, and simpler. You define how you want your data to be structured once. Then you can use special generated source code to easily write and read your structured data to and form a barrier of data streams and using a of language. In other words, the computer can read its directory so the result is faster. Next slide. Next, I will explain about raster tiles. As shown in the previous figure, in the case of the map of Tako Tamagawa, a photograph of the flooded river is posted. At Furuhashi Labo, we are also conducting a project called Drone Bar. And when a disaster occurs in the area where we have an agreement, we will take aerial photographs using a drone and published it as open data. Images and published on open area map and are available to everyone. Finally, we are talking about implementing a web map hosting file. In the case of Tago Tamagawa map, map river is used as a library. Motivated by the 2020 transition to proprietary recessing for Mapbox GLJS, the initial libraries are forks of the mapping Mapbox GL ecosystem for the web and mobile platforms. At UNBT, open source is ideal, but in Reality Mapbox GLJS is better. So I use its property depending on the situation. As a library, I use a Mapbox GLJS and Leaflet. UNBT will use charities for the styling after this. 
but map label has a tool called map tunic that all allows you to free free freely customize the style which is very convenient UNBT portable is very easy to use as it can also be connected from a QR code. I hope that UNBT portable will play an active role in many fields in the future. Next, as an operation example of UNBT, I will introduce the making of digital photograph maps of Albania. We would like to explain it in an easy to understand using graphic recording. According to JICA, a 2000 scale the digital topographic map of the Tirana Daria area of about 300 square kilometers was completed as part of the project to improve the ability the, uh, to create digital maps of the Tirana Daria areas in Albania in 2021. Next slide. Uh, since the topographic map created in this project is of a large scale, it was expected to be used for various purposes in the future, such as planning for each sector and maintenance infrastructure if, uh, if infrastructure for land management measures. Next slide. They had never created such a large-scale digital topographic maps in Albania. For this reason, we have also implemented technology, technology transfer so that the Albanian site can reliably create it and update digital topographic maps and train engineers after the project is completed. The emphasis was on being able to train plan and implement the entire form from outdoor work related to surveys to indoor work related to drawing on its own. As a result, the geospatial information management sec uh, security which is currently the implementing agency on the Albania side is planning and implementing the creation of digital traffic maps in further regions and the uh, sorry and the uh, no uh, and the result of Lebanese support a uh, st steadily burning fruit. This project is being implemented through outsourcing to a joint venture between PASCO Corporation and Koksai Kyogo. Okay, next, next speaker is Rara. Thank you, Theory. Um, in addition with this cooperation, we have transferred the technology of the United Nations Vector Tile Toolkit, which is a technology suitable for the digital age and is being promoted by the United Nations with the conventional raster format treats the map as an image. The vector format treats the dots, lines, and planes of the maps as character data. Uh, please. <laughs> so the amount of data can be reduced. Moreover, the vector map can be expanded and contracted. And it is also easy to process it by taking out only the track and making a root map. This technology 
led by the United Nations and the Geospatial, Geospatial Information Authority of Japan, enables the generation and distribution of vector type from topographic map data using the expensive single world computer Raspberry Pi. This is expected to further promote the utilization of topographic map data on the internet. Please give me a next slide. Thank you. At the end of the project, an end seminar was held online on November 4th, 2021 with a total of 66 participants from Albania's related organizations and local governments, including the Zero Data Information Management Secretariat. At the seminar, participants shared information on the 1-2000 scale digital topography map created in the project, activity result, and utilization methods. It is expected that utilization in related organization in the future will gain more momentum. A regional seminar was held online on November 5th, held with the participants, participation of geopersonal intelligence agencies from six countries, Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Montenegro, North Macedonia and Japan in the West, Western Balkans. The seminar was held with the participation of participating organization along with the report on the result of the project. The states of geospatial information development and future plans for each country were discussed. Through such seminars, it is expected that a network of geospatial intelligence agencies in the Western Balkans region will be strengthened. Thank you for thank you for listening to our presentation. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> thank you, Urara Shiori. Uh, so far, we explained the about UNVT overview and technical uh, part. And now let us propose use cases for UNVT that we have come up with. And we have considered how it could be used in the countries of today's audiences. First, I propose a use case in the Philippines. First, I looked for issues in the Philippines. These include natural disasters, such as typhoons, earthquakes, and floods, as well as uh, social issues, such as uh, poverty and swamps. Among them, I focused on natural disasters caused by typhoons. According to database run by the United University of Leuven, more than 200 typhoons have been recorded in the Philippines in the past 30 years, the highest of any Asian country. Last December, the extremely powerful typhoon called Rai, or okay, called Rai, made uh, landfall in the Philippines, causing extensive damage to many areas. During typhoon disaster, web maps are important for evacuation, damage assessment, and recovery. However, it is highly, like, highly likely that you will not be able to access the internet in this case. With Raspberry Pi, UNVT helps to create a server that can be used in offline environments. And residents can download and view local maps from the Raspberry Pi on which the vector tiles are stored. 
If the Raspberry Pi is set up as a Wi-Fi access point, it can be it can provide data to other devices even when offline. Important information such as aerial photos, damage assessment, and evacuation centers can be input into its vector tiles to share necessary information in the event of a disaster. And also, this can be done either before the disaster or offline during the disaster. Thus, UNVD and Raspberry Pi can help share necessary information to various people in evacuation, recovery, and disaster management situations from typhoons. Next, Natsumi will propose a use case in Indonesia. Hello, everyone. I'm Natsumi Haga, and now I will give you about um, use case in Indonesia. In Indonesia, the forestation of tropical rainforest and other forests and fire cases by open burning on peatland have become a serious problem. Um, peatland is um, areas uh, containing large amount of carbon in underground, by the way. Um, and according to a report by Worldwide Fund for Nature Japan, um, in Sumatra, the tropical forest that covered 25.3 million hectares or 58% of the island area in 1985 were reduced to 10.4 million hectares, less than half in 2016. And in addition, peatland fire have caused air pollution and health problems such as bleeding problems, um, not only to the residents of the surrounding area, but also the neighboring countries such as Malaysia and Singapore. A major factor in this decline is due to deforestation and field burning for the purpose of expanding plantation. Um, in recent years, WWF has been um, patrolling the area and taking um, counter measuring measures, sorry, but um, there has not been much progress in controlling this, this situation. Um, then here, uh, we thought that by using UNVT to overlay the location data of plantation of the on the location data of tropical forest, um, national park and plant peatland, we could some uh sorry we could um summarize the er the area that should be patrolled with priority in an easy to understand format. So um, Indonesia belongs to the uh, Pacific Ring of Fire and is one of most volcanic active countries in the world. So one of, uh, one of three major volcanic disasters of all time uh, the first and second occurred in Indonesia. It has also ranked first in the world um, in number of um, casualties due to volcanic disaster over the past these, um, sorry, 300 years. Um, using UNVT, for example, it is possible to um, simultaneously uh, display display data on the location of shelters and other evacuation sites, um, as well as data on the location of facility with in-house power, power gen generation um, equipment um, in the event of 
a power outage. In addition, um, in addition to data on the expected area of damage due to volcanic eruptions um, and so on. In this way, uh, maps can be uh, produced that are uh, useful not only immediately after an elaboration, but also for uh, evacuation life, uh, life afterwards. Yeah, that's all, thank you. So few, sorry for that. Uh, I'm oh. forgot <laughs> to change the uh, deforestation slides. Uh, this shows the how uh, deforestation promoted uh, in, in Indonesia. Excuse us, sorry. Sorry. It's okay. So next, um, Ayako Takahashi will propose the use case in Sri Lanka. Okay, I'm, I'm Ayako and I will, <clears throat> I'd like to talk about how we can use UNBT in Sri Lanka. Well, first of all, I have to say that I didn't know well about Sri Lanka, so there might be misunderstanding. So if you notice something just not true or doesn't make sense about Sri Lanka, please let me know after the presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, anyway, what I knew about Sri Lanka was just like which language they use or something like that. And this knowledge didn't really help me to think the situation we can make use of UNBT in Sri Lanka. So I tried to figure it out and um, I found out that Japan and Sri Lanka has a lot, of, a lot in common. Um, can you, yep, yeah, thank you. So one of the similarity between Sri Lanka and Japan would definitely be various natural disasters. According to the Asian Disaster um, Reduction Center, Center's offshore website, major disasters in Sri Lanka are floods, landslides, cyclones, drought, lightning, coastal erosion, and tsunami. Well, um, drought is not that common in Japan, but floods, landslide, um, tsunami are common disaster in Japan as well. Um, actually, I made this map. Can you move to the next slide? Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is the map I made with UNBT a few months ago. The map is composed by base map and um, landslides estimation data, which I colored. It's what we call styling. And if we, as people who can make map by using a UNVT, put this data into Raspberry Pi and hand it to civil servant, it will help them coping with the difficult situation after the disaster by showing them the places which are likely to have um, landslides. And Raspberry Pi is relatively cheap as um, Professor Kuruhashi said before. So it is possible to just give the Raspberry Pi to them. And I believe that it's one of the most easy way to give map data to them. I mean, civil servants and that kind of people. Um, and also if we make Raspberry Pi into an access point, as we explained in the first half of today's session, it's easy for civil servant as people who are not professional in GIS field to use this map because they can easily reach to the map data without any special skill. If we prepare QO code, what they have to do would be just read the QO code with their mobile phone or something like that. And it can be done even if there are no internet access. Oh, and also 
putting aerial photography of just after the disaster, like just um, after disaster occurred, the map before, um, like if we put the aerial photograph on this map before we give it to civil servant, it will be more useful map data, I guess. Um, yep, and then as there is a law called Disaster Management Act number 13 of 2005. Yeah, that one. It can be said that Sri Lanka is focusing on preparing for disaster. So using UNVT portable in disaster prevention area sounds really like good. Okay. Although it seems good idea to use UNVT in this way, but I thought there should be some more unique um, way to make use of UNVT as well. And then what I came up with as unique aspect of Sri Lanka was elephants. And I found out that living with elephants is not always happy and nice. It said that there are many cases that elephants attack human and cause serious injury or even death. So my suggestion is to use UNPT to prevent and analyze those attacks. For example, if we know where each person was attacked, like just putting that data on a base map might help people predict where they are likely to be attacked next. Um, I'm not sure, but I guess elephant attacks human more in deep forests than in cities, which means places where people have to be careful are tend to be remote region. It means without internet. So I think it is it should be a nice idea to use UNVT portable in this field. Yeah, thank you, that's it. Thank you, Ayako. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, okay. And finally, uh, Natsumi will propose the use case in Nepal. Please okay. go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to talk about the use case in Nepal. Uh, Nepal is one of the most disaster prone uh, country in the world. And according to ADLC, Asia Disaster Re Reduction Center, um, they said they have earthquake, flood, and landslides and fires. So besides um, Nepal located near the boundary between the in Indian and Eurasian plate, so it is affected strongly by earthquakes. In 2015, um, we know the Golka um, earthquake, which was a magnitude of 9.6 and causes extensive damage to that place. And recently, October 2021, flooding and landslide caused by Heavy, heavy rains in the Western Nepal. And also the um, rains in Southern Nepal every year, um, there is constant spreading damage due to heavy rain during the rainy season. Um, students county in Japan for overseas support, um, it's called Chaplani, Report that there are many areas with um, inadequate uh, disaster prevention measures that do not have um, government or NGO support in rural area. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, regarding regarding this south place, especially in Talai region. 
Japanese government uh, decided to do grant assistance about 1.70 billion yen. I, I captured the um, homepage of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Japan, but sorry, I found only information in Japanese. Um, it says exchange of letters on ground assistance to Nepal for capacity building in disaster management. It have to make great hazard maps with high geo skills, but it but this um, completion is four years later, 2025, so it's not enough for now. Then uh, we can use UNVT. The system allows for easy viewing of past disaster area in one place and can be used in urban area as well as rural area without the need for internet access in times of emergency. Or it can be used to support evacuation trainings. So um, can you go next slide, please? Okay, thank you. So during disasters, um, they can use UNVT as a web maps, and the it must be significant to reduce damage for people. And after disasters, um, they can use it to know where it got damage or need repair. And with Raspberry Pi. And also UNB helps to know safe route to evacuation um, under a flood and landslide disaster that can be used in offline environment. Yeah, and so far we will tell you about use cases for each countries. With UNVT, we can help that grows and contribute to um, building a disaster reduction for nations. So, but we also glad to get comment and update information from all of you. So um, thank you for listening. Sorry, thank you, Natsumi. And um, that's all of um, UNVT explanation and use case proposal. So um, thank you for listening. Now I have to answer any question you may have. Oh, just one question uh, from okay. uh, Yuiseki-san. So uh, I would like to ask if there is anything UNBT can do in Ukraine. Ukraine. Oh. Okay, uh, that's it. That is quite important question. And actually, um, we use Mapas AGU and mapping and mapping for Ukraine refugees. Actually, um, we mapped the we map we are mapping the area of Poland because uh, this area is the destination of the destination for Ukraine refugees. But um, actually, and actually. I haven't thought the UNVT use case in Ukraine now, but um, because uh, UNVT and um, UNVT is um, useful in the place in Ukraine, so uh, we in Japan and my mm, in Japan we may we may 
not uh, cooperate to help Ukraine using UNVT. So we just uh, mapping the OSM with ID editor now, but maybe uh, from now um, we come up with the use case in Ukraine. So the answer is um, we are thinking about good idea to uh, good idea to use UNVT for Ukraine. Can I add something? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Um, I think um, since I heard that many places in Ukraine um, doesn't have electricity and maybe internet access right now due to the attacks. So, like, in terms of having a map which we can see under, like, offline situation, UNVT will help a lot um, in Ukraine. But the problem is, even if, for example, even if we may um, make a map for people in Ukraine to give give them a date map data of like safe place or place to get some donation of food or something. Um, we have to give it to them anyway like, so, as Ibuki said, um, what we can, what we as Japanese can do from Japan remotely is more likely to be mapping OSM rather than like using UNVT, I guess. But I'm sure that UNVT can do something in Ukraine as well. In addition, and the landscape of Ukraine uh, is changing every day by uh, Russian attack. So um, Professor Furuhashi and Professor uh, Watanabe of Tokyo University is checking the satellite photographs and, and uh, figure out where uh, where which cities attacked every day. So um, this research uh, can this research can used for UNVT, uh, for example satellite image, uh, put satellite image on the vector tile map. So it can be um, recovering in the Ukraine one day, or someday. Okay. Okay. And another question, so already I answered about the technical information. So I have to uh, uh, speak. So what are uh, the different tools available in the UNBT toolkit? There is a rich set of tools I see in the GitHub repositories. Uh, is there some place where I can find out what each of the, the, these tools uh, you uh, used for 
so and uh, I uh, answered some information. Maybe next uh, information we will add. So mainly, UNBT's major repository exists on uh, github.com uh, slash UNBT. And also, so we know uh, and many uh, UNBT community are using another uh, organization or another uh, uh, repository too. So maybe I will add more information. And also, so uh, UNBT community is growing in, in the global and also Japanese uh, engineer likes uh, UNBT. And uh, so sorry in Japanese, but uh, uh, every year, so uh, our community are publishing uh, advent calendars uh, based on the Kita platform. Uh, but mainly those information in Japanese, so we have to translate in English or other countries. So that is our uh, next uh, step. So, okay. And uh, next question uh, are the methodologies methodolo oh, <laughs> for the same data analysis example? Deforestation map shown in, for Indonesia. So also available in UNBT in script, model, builder format, uh, or only the raw data and output maps are stored. Thank you for uh, this wonderful project. So, from the anonymous uh, attendees. Yes, someone can. Answer. Uh, so that is an analysis question. Uh, maybe I think. Oh, so, uh, yeah, the UNBT uh, toolkit uh, is providing. Uh, the uh, making data or styling uh, the, the specification and hosting data set, but without analysis process and algorithm. So uh, I think, in my opinion, so maybe UNBT toolkit is a toolkit. So that is a, uh, that how to say it, uh, idea can extend for that algorithm or uh, processing. So, uh, I think uh, uh, recently, uh, uh, geo information uh, intelligent tool, example that uh, that name is Calp, Calp uh, DB or Apostis based uh, some database system or uh, other uh, intelligent tool with geospatial data. So that uh, platform can combine that some uh, hours. So I think uh, still those uh, analyzing platform is uh, uh, not uh, some, many times not open source too, but uh, if we can add some good uh, analysis too, or something, I think uh, post GIS, post GIS, is a very good uh, geospatial analysis, uh, analysis in, analyzing uh, database uh, too. So uh, I think that combination is better. So, but still, yeah, uh, those uh, algorithms uh, process, uh, processing uh, step is very important, I think. Thank you for a great uh, question. And uh, so, yes, I think questions at all. And if, yes, chatting now. If someone, some attendees uh, want to talk or comment, please hands up. I guess maybe uh, Suz, Suzukaran from Sri Lanka. So maybe. You want to talk? Can you talk? Uh, yes, uh, Professor. Thank you. And the, and the team, actually, it was, you know, very nice and, you know, uh, impressed on me 
uh, I know that you know you and uh, VT that you know when uh, it was introduced in the Fox 4G in Sri Lanka at that time in 2018, I can remember. Uh, so I noticed that you know the tool will be very useful for us. So uh, actually, still you know I didn't also you know uh, use uh, that uh, tool so far, but uh, I am you know I'm interested to use that tool because I'm also in the field in the GIS and you know OpenStreetMap and those things. And also I'm also you know leading the lectures to our students in the GIS and uh, disaster management. So. If a team uh, can arrange, uh, you know, uh, one hour session for our students and for our staff, how to use this um, UNVT tool, which will be very useful for us. Thank you very much. And also another good thing that, you know, we are going to have a SOTM Asia conference in Sri Lanka, which will be held at the Eastern University where I am teaching. So hope that you will be you know, coming to coming down to Sri Lanka and have a look. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So now, okay. Yeah. Another question is no. Okay. So if there is no question, okay. Let's. Move to closing session. Um, since um, Yu Seki san yeah, yeah, yeah. said, like, um, Yu Seki san is interested in like how we can support Ukraine mm -hmm. by mapping or like GIS using GIS. How about like briefly? explain what we are doing for um, Ukraine these days. What do you think? <laughs> like just explain like how we map Poland and where we are explaining what we are doing. Like, I just want to share the link of the Pomo PL <laughs> and the Medium articles we wrote. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will just. Yeah, so uh, many uh recent uh, Ukraine's crisis situation, so uh, OpenSmap. Poland team is uh, are supporting uh, based on that Dopomoha platform. And uh, so uh, many, uh, every day, I guess, I think may, every day uh, that uh, POI data set, uh, uh, example, reception point or information point or broad donation point. Uh, anyway, those data is extending and uh, updating and uh, or student, uh, US, uh, US map as the AGU team and uh, other uh, members. So they are uh, mapping uh, those PO around the POI's data set. So, uh, and uh, also uh, now we are, we can make uh, very detailed data at the uh, buildings or road or some land use data set, but uh, so uh, sometimes I uh, catch up to some uh, situation and information and request from the uh, uh, local uh, members. So uh, they want to add example, Ukrainian, Ukrainian language or uh, other, or maybe I guess Russian or uh, or so or local languages information is very important. So we cannot support for those language problem, but uh, maybe uh, other uh, countries member can add more uh, map data information uh, as gen general uh, building on road and other land use data. So, and uh, so 
Uh, I guess so. Now we are communicating to example uh, the MSF team or uh, Red Cross team. So via the Japan team. Uh, anyway, so I guess so each uh, team uh, working on the actual uh, uh, Poland areas, uh, each reception point or the other point. So um, maybe next step we should communicate and we, we will get some uh, so use cases with those data set. So, but uh, maybe those uh, detailed data, uh, so I think uh, the uh, recent situations data uh, is very uh, few. Uh, so I guess one month or a few months ago, so those uh, story will uh, uh, come as a feedback. So recently we can use and we can get some information from this topomoha.pl platform. And also uh, OpsMap Poland community are using uh, Discord chat to and mainly in port, uh, Poland language, but sometimes we can uh, communicate in English. Yes, okay. 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 So, can you hear uh, Miko Tamura? Can you talk and please comment this workshop if you can from Philippines? Hi, Tamura san, Miko san. Yeah, I think, I think the tool is very useful, will be very useful. Um, but uh, I think in some cases, it's it's still technical, so we need to make sure that the tools would be easier to be absorbed. Because um, the easier it becomes, the, the the more diverse the tool will be able to be useful for various use cases. So I've seen the use cases that were presented. It's it's uh, it's already very helpful. Uh, but what we we but but it is also interesting how it would be grown more by other and more un or uh, and other diverse use cases. Yes, thank you very much for everyone who presented. I have enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. So yeah, uh, yes. Next step. So we are thinking about uh, the more technical uh, workshop, and uh, so many times we I'm I'm a. Uh, uh, negotiating to some uh, companies and uh, so yeah uh, I hope I hope so uh, if we can get good budget from uh, sponsor companies so we, we will provide uh, so Raspberry Pi for each country and then so we should connect to uh, like the Zoom or uh, telecom uh, uh, telecommunication to and we should uh, install, we should uh, optimize, we should run, or we should make a uh, vector tile data set. So maybe, yeah, Suzukara-san uh, uh, said, so we, I think so. we should divide uh, for the about one hours. So uh, making a data set uh, for one class, making the style uh, specification, making a hosting server. Anyway, so we should uh, connect and we should uh, make more uh, good workshop with uh, uh, many countries, mappers. So thank you for joining today's workshop. Uh, I think a uh, little short time, but uh, this video uh, is recording now and we will publish after this workshop via uh, Open Map Hub. So, and uh, so see you next time. And uh, so maybe I guess, I hope so 
my student will make more good use cases next step. So uh, thank you for joining. And uh, any comment from a student side? No. Uh, thank you for listening today. Um, today, we uh, explain what UNVT and use cases, but actually um, only some of us succeed uh, to uh, use UNVT in reality. Uh, so, um, others have not success to use UNVT completely. And um, the chief of UNVT, Mr. Fujimura, says that uh, UNVT operating is a uh, little bit difficult for pro professional uh, United Nations staff. So uh, we will uh, make more effort to use an UNVT for uh, many cases. So uh, we we try <laughs> try on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, and uh, see you next time. And uh, Today, uh, this uh, workshop will finish. Thank you, everyone. Thank Good you. night. And, uh, Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you.